legislative to action be writing support six point five. They went the other direction. They uh, people. Um, so that resulted in a net loss of one point five million. If you turn to the chart on the next page, what the only way to analyze this is to take all the revenues that were impacted by PAVP, which would be of course the vehicle tax. The TABD coming in, the local option which was impacted, and your squash which were impacted. Add them all up together and see how you compare to the prior year. So it shows a $1.5 million decline from the previous year. Some of that would be decline in loss and squash, which I'll come over in a few minutes, but the majority of that is most likely that cut in the TABD. Also, notice that your vehicle is coming off the digest is really accelerating. Um, it won't, you know, we're supposed to go 10 years and then it's going to drop everything. I don't know if it's going to make it 10 years. You, they may only be gone two more years to make it go. Uh, so they're really, they're moving off quickly. Uh, it only takes, it's not just that you can buy a new car, it's also the like sell it. Uh, so that triggers it and suddenly everything is you can sell to the private person if they're off the, the uh, tax cut yes. So hopefully the state will address that, although they're not. The other thing that they um, could do is raise the rate. But it is set through 2018. 2018, they're supposed to reassess it. They can go as high as 9%. They're saying for now it's stuck at 7%. I find it hard to believe that they're going to raise because that's going to be considered a tax increase. I think you had mentioned this, but they do have the ability, though, to raise the cap that they have on the local governments as it is now. We, we reach the cap and then it stops. Right. right. Do they have the ability or can they go in well, any time and raise that cap? They took it down and I didn't see anything to indicate how that process was implemented or what the, see in the law the, the, the percentage is seven to nine. It is preset to reevaluate in 2018 and 2020. It's in the law they have to do that. How they changed this percentage of local governments, I didn't notice. Do you have any yes. Your squash is down 117,137. 
almost every month it's been down except for one that bumped up and it wasn't even the holiday season. It was just this odd month where it jumped up for some reason. That, that's the kind of thing that tries, it defies logic as to what's going on here. I try Ware County the same way I do Lowell's monthly and I get totally different readings all the time between the two counties. I never, um, yeah, I <coughs>
Um, so it, 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 needs, it needs to be addressed. Uh, I know folks like the fact that they can go online and they can buy it uh, and they can save that 7% tax. Uh, our reality is, is that we still have as local governments, I'm not talking about just Lance County, all in general, we still have those basic services that we're still expected to, to uh, have in place for the citizens of these communities. And so it does put a real burden on not just uh, the local government from the standpoint of how can you provide those services, but it puts a local, local burden as well on the property owners and the taxpayers in Miami County or any other municipality, any other government uh, location to be able to figure out uh, basically, they don't have to get hit. I say have to, they don't ever have to. But we have to take the issue into consideration. Are we going to provide those services and how we're going to do it? And if that cost continues to go up, that means that expense and that cost of ID and tax increase <coughs> has to come back to the property. So this is something I think that everybody as a whole needs to embrace that this uh, online online shopping, there's nothing wrong with online shopping. It's just that if taxes are owed online, if you pay the taxes locally and you buy it online, you should still pay the taxes. It shouldn't be taxed. Well, I think the supporters of this bill have already acknowledged that if it is successfully passed, they're expecting a court case over the property side. Oh, the tax page, I just want to give you an indication of who's driving the online. It's not easy to do because. As you can see by my diagram, there's how men shop and there's how women shop. <laughs> men go in and get what they want and come out. Guess who likes online purchases? Males 21 to 34 are leading in all areas. Uh, older men are even outpacing all the women who really are going to the shopping center. Uh, and of course, everybody turns around. Malls are just past that. Nobody goes to malls. That's probably driving some of the problem here is that the store actually grows sales in my office at the malls that it's not doing it. Um, if that's just not where, where this, especially millennials, want to go. They're even saying because they used to go there for entertainment or social, they don't have to anymore. They got all the social right on their phone. So they don't even show up there. They have no interest in being there. Um, <laughs> There's definitions of the commodity sectors if you want to see what's included. But I checked with the Department of Revenue and looked at several surrounding counties. Um, this was their data from 2015, 2016. And these are splash dollars because that's 100%, so I don't have to worry about percentages. You can see Cook was a, uh, Brooks is a, uh, so they can stop fussing about Lowell County taking their sales tax. Lanier's <laughs> 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 uh, Barron was down, Clinch was up, Caulfield was down, Coffee, Tip down, and then Lounge down. Well, some of what I'm reading is that is we are losing regional retail purchases. Um, part of the growth in restaurant and food may be that they're coming here to eat, but they're not coming here to shop. And some of that maybe because they're going online. Um, but for some reason, their, their county results are higher. And these are nearby counties. Um, so that would indicate to me that they're just shopping more in their own county than they are showing the lines. I think that probably some of that to reflect that. Um, um, I, I think also, and I'm not just seeing it out of any particular person, but now if you look around, you got small sh little shop dollar generals and family dollar. You got one at just about every little crossroad in every community, um, and and you got some other um, uh, grocery stores rather than a mom and pop operation. You now have some franchises that are moving into some of these smaller communities. <coughs> so rather than somebody, for example, in equipment would have to, would to choose to come over here to shop at a Harvey's, they got a Harvey's there in in. Um, equipment that they can go shop to, or they've got a Dollar General that they need to go and pick up a few 
miscellaneous supplies, they don't have to come over here to do it. They can do it right there in their own community. Yeah. So I think that that's part of it as well. Yes, that, that definitely, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure that they have more retail establishments now than in the past. I, I travel to the near County all the time in Lakeland. Even though they had a Walmart, it disappeared now. It's a uh, family dollar or one of those. It's, right. So it's already changed out. That's right. And so they're they're not the big box stores are looking how they can serve the smaller communities, which some of them have tried and some of them haven't been real successful. But I think it's also these, these other uh, retailers that are focused on smaller communities and not just necessarily smaller communities, but a smaller area of the population inside a larger uh, population. They want to look at how they can serve those areas and capture that market. And that's what you see with, with these uh, retailers on the, on the culverts. Some of that's happening. Okay. And finally, the, an update on your squash. I have two, two of those. As we mentioned earlier, squash tribe closed out. Um, squash six is strictly voted above for recreation. Um, so as, as some of those major projects moving forward, that will probably spend down too. Squash 7 is running at 75.19% of our referendum estimates. So basically 25% below. And as I mentioned before, um, in my chart here, as we put in the actuals, those revenue estimates and projections come down, except for the ones below the break there, public safety radio, park and rec, animal shelter. Civic Center, all those are frozen. So they're going to get whatever they need to get. Actually, the Civic Center went a little bit over, so we had to give them a little bit more money just to close it out. Um, but they're not going to get cut as the money goes down. Um, the only, it's not a problem that you need to be aware of it is because the roads was cut off so much during swastics for about three years there. Mike's playing catch-up. Well, he's ahead of the game. <laughs> he's about three million ahead of the game. Not in terms of y'all have the money, but he's he's probably gonna get to the last year and not have any more road money. Uh, so you may have another gap. But hopefully it won't be as bad as the last gap. He'll have his AML big money, so that'll help some, and he is using that every year and matching it with the spots money. But there will be a gap there between spots where it rose. You know, so they can only get these over there, don't get ready. <coughs> <laughs> but all other areas seem to be doing fine. Um, water sewer spent much last year. But, um, Steve is, is really got a backlog of money to use, but he's making those decisions very methodically, not that like it. He's just moving to it a little bit slower pace. Probably We've got great things for students for that. Well, you may have. <laughs> and that's where it gets down to the planning and when you point time you start constructing the road. I'm sure Mike had tons of road projects just waiting today. So, matter of fact, wait today, Sloss Pack seems ready to spin. No, 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 no. So, you know, he's doing the best he can with the money that's there. Uh, but at least you do have. You know, you're projected to have close to 19 million. That's a lot to put in the roads. So at the end of the spot, you can spend you know, a lot of money on road work. Right. Um, and when we uh, keep hearing around the nation about all this infrastructure, that may be another out. I don't know if they'll ever do anything. But if they get serious about infrastructure, there might be some federal dollars to them. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, they get serious with it. What we're, you know, in our situation, last kind of situation, we're proactive about it, so we're addressing our roads and certainly our bridges, which from the infrastructure standpoint, from the federal standpoint, those bridges, some of them are in real bad shape. But we've identified those bridges here that needs attention. There were seven bridges in that squash project, or squash referendum, and we're moving, trying to move on a bridge a year, and so we're uh, doing a great job with that. <coughs> Bridges will probably be focused 
was done. And it seems like they're they're very concerned about safety, uh, infrastructure, mm -hmm. dams, bridges, anything that could create a disaster or, or you know result in death. So if they do do something, there might be some rich money you can match up with this lost money, and that would have like I said. Uh, it needs to be something a little more general than the last time they tried this. It was too convoluted. It was not enough money. And you had to be so specific about the project. And then they spent a ton of money on the side to say, this is our infrastructure project. <laughs> if you drove to the near county, you saw one of those, so they took out that curve. There was this humongous sign <laughs> to say, here's your federal dollars to work. <laughs>
they are trying to catch up with the fact that now we have to disclose all this in your audit report. And I think the public awareness now that a lot of plans were basically questionable um, is driving them to be more conservative. And so they're starting to change the way they approach their actuary. In fact, I think they were going to change one of the percents. Uh, I think it was the uh, inflation percent of one of them. And they were going to do a big uh, promotion on that and explain why they were doing that. Well, I think it's something that we need. I mean, certainly it's one of those things we need to pay attention to. I mean, it's no different than health care. Fortunately, the health care curves kind of come down a little bit on the expense side. But as the retirement expense, uh, we need to kind of track that and watch that. Um, but um, it looks like it's in good shape on that. Yeah, you know, I don't, it, it doesn't look like it's just going to take off. But, um, maybe that's why they're just trying to tack up a little bit each year. Maybe they really know that if you want to get it right, you really love it one year. But hopefully, over time, you know, it'll be. It should be self-sustaining even on their financial analysis of it. So what's our, our time average? Is it eight plus years? These people something? Is it eight or something? Seven five. It's still seven five? Seven your years and your age? Seven five. But you have to be at least fifty-five and you have to you don't put us until after ten years, so you have to go down for at least ten years. So the third one? That's pretty cool. <laughs>
you're going to have a gap of people who are going to stay eventually on the plan longer as they retire. Now, we are seeing less people who are staying and keeping that benefit after um, they retire. And back to the number of people that we have on the retirement plan long term, we're not adding people to that number that Harrison gave you as quickly as we were before. Because I guess about seven years ago, we made a change from you vesting after five years to vesting after 10 years. And because of the mentality of millennials and how things are changing, you don't see people staying as long as they used to. So I think that over time, you will see a decrease in um, the people who actually invest in our retirement plan, simply because of that for you know, people moving around and because it takes 10 years to invest. We do have in that um, section employees that David was talking about, um, those that Average of 48 and 49 years of age. Some of those that are getting uh, older, they are staying longer as opposed to some of those, uh, the new ones, millennials, whatever you want to call them, that are coming in. And a lot of that is, well, we've got one, I think he's, he's been 73, 72, something like that. And he looked at retiring and said, I'd rather stay working. So there are still some that are staying on the uh, even though they could retire. I'm wondering, what's the oldest retiree you have? I think, oh, the oldest retiree? No, we have some in their 80s, <clears throat> for sure. Okay. Any other questions on that? On average, we, we got retirees, we have about 25 to 30 years to go ahead and retire. I guess it's possible. It's possible. They could. And you also see, depending on um, more now, because you have you know two people in, in home working, so you can have two people who have retirement, the choice that they take when they retire. Would, sometimes it's either a lesser amount so that it pays their spouse after the fact or they'll take that greater amount first. So you see that greater amount, which that ends with their debt. So you see that happening more, so we're not paying spouse benefits as long as we were because now we've left the retirements. It's as complicated as Social Security. <laughs>